ever consider suicide? I have, yeah. I actually tried attempting it a few times when I was a teenager. I'm 23 now. Do you ever have suicidal thoughts? Yes, frequently. Did you ever attempt to commit suicide? I did once. What happened? It was halfway through. It's just like I just realized I didn't want to do it. Do you ever think about suicide? Yes. Do you ever think about suicide? Yeah. I tried it before. What did you do? Uh, I took pills. I tried to like shoot myself and I tried to hang myself. Three different occasions? Six different occasions. Well, Ray Comfort joins us now by Skype from Bellflower, California. Ray, thanks for coming on the show and joining us today. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Well, as we just watched in your new movie, Exit, you spoke to young people about their suicide attempts. What was your greatest discovery that you didn't know before? I didn't realize how many were contemplating suicide. The only time you hear of suicide is when a celebrity takes his life, but something like 42,000 Americans... Uh, kill themselves each year. There's an epidemic, plus half a million end up in hospital with attempted suicide. So this is something we've got. It's a, it's an, it's a very depressing subject. It's got the excitement of a, a skunk with halitosis, but the church has to step up to the plate because we've got the answer. We know uh, why people get depressed. I mean, the, the experts in the world haven't got a clue what causes chronic depression, but we know we live in a fallen creation, and we know that faith in God is the answer. And so uh, we've stepped up with this movie, which contains the gospel. And it, it offers hope. Ray, do you have any insight onto why there's an increase in suicides? Yeah, I think uh, in past generations, America has been kind of God-fearing, and there's been a measure of faith in God. People know why they exist. They were created by God, and they have a hope of heaven. But what's happened with this generation is they've embraced atheism. It's left them without hope and purpose for existence. So uh, suicide has become an alternative to them. And so we have literally, literally millions who have embraced uh, atheism and they've got that option. And now, of course, we've got popular series like the one on Netflix, 13 Reasons Why. What do you think of that program? It, uh, it's hopeless. It's crazy. The heroine uh, commits suicide. They show how she did it. And they forgot about the cutters out there. Literally thousands of kids that cut themselves and they're getting used to uh, suicide. And it's, it's horrific. And I think one of the most relevant um, things stated in Exit was, Exit was a young lady. I've got an echo in my, if you tech guys could get rid of my voice coming back at me, it'd be great. Just, uh, oh, that's much better. Thank you. Uh, one of the, the statements the girl says is that she has uh, suicidal thoughts all the time. I said, isn't that scary? And she said, no, you get used to it. And cutters get used to it. They cut their arms. The thought of you and I cutting our wrists and bleeding to death is horrific. But for this, uh, this generation that cuts themselves, they're used to it. So this is real scary when they do something like that. And you alluded to it earlier, Ray, that the church, the Christian church, doesn't seem to really want to engage in this topic. Yet many Christians are struggling with depression. How do we fight this? Well, through faith in God, the difference between being a Christian and non-Christian is like the difference between two people standing on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up. One doesn't have a parachute, utterly hopeless, depressing, horrific. The other has a parachute, and his fear is the direct correlation of the much faith he has in the parachute. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. Death has lost its sting. All things work together for good. So we do suffer from depression. We get gloomy, but we have, we have to lift ourselves by the bootlaces and say, all things are working together for my good, and I trust God in this. Your passion obviously shines through in this. Do you think the American public doesn't realize the problem and the epidemic this really is? No, I don't think so. And, um, you know, one of the reasons people shouldn't commit suicide, if I may share it, is uh, the Philippian jailer was going to kill himself. Uh, we know Paul and Silas sung hymns and midnight praises to God, and suddenly God did a, a, a miracle. The, the chains fell off, the earthquake took place, and the doors are open. That's the type of the gospel. Um, the, the moment Jesus died, there was an earthquake, and our chains fell off, and the doors of heaven were opened. And this Philippian jailer didn't realize that all the prisoners were still there. God had done a miracle. He thought they'd gone. He thought he was going to suffer at the hands of the Romans because the Romans were very diligent <clears throat> in making sure people did their job. If you lost your prisoner, you suffered the fate that he was going to die. If he was going to be crucified, you had to be crucified. So this jailer thought he was going to end it all and got his sword out to kill himself. And Paul says, 
no, don't do yourself any harm, we're all here. And, and so that's the reason we should never, ever think of taking our lives, because God does miracles. And if you take your life, you negate the hand of God. That's the principle of Scripture with Moses at the Red Sea, utterly hopeless, depressing, couldn't do anything, impossible situation. God did the impossible. Uh, same with Daniel in the lion's den, impossible situation. Lots of lip, lions licking their lips and looking at him for lunch. What did he do? He trusted God and God stopped their mouths. And we see with Job, <clears throat> Job wanted to die. He said, God, you kill me. But he didn't take his life himself. And so what we've got to do is trust God. What seems impossible, what seems hopeless, isn't hopeless and isn't impossible to God. So a Christian should, or anybody should never commit suicide or attempt it. They should look to God and trust him no matter how depressing and hopeless. Ray, one of the amazing, I think, revelations of your film is, you know, you went out to interview young people. You go onto this campus and you encounter people who have not only tried to commit suicide once, but multiple times. There's great hopelessness out there. Yeah, out of hopelessness, and, and that's the reason so many are uh, turning to suicide. We produced a book to go with a film. It's called How to Fight uh, Depression and Suicidal Thoughts, How to Battle Depression and Suicidal Thoughts. And if I've got time, I'd like to share with you the opening of that book because it's so powerful. Let me tell you quickly about a story of a friend of mine. His name's Scotty. His brother was taken in uh, 2012 in Utah and uh, by a group of masked men with knives, <coughs> And they knocked him out, cut open his chest, and took out his heart, and no one did a thing to stop them. And you say, that's horrific. Well, it's not horrific. What they were were surgeons. They were masked, they had scalpers, they knocked him out through anesthesia, took out his heart and replaced it with a new heart. What they did was wonderful. And that's the opening of this book. A young man is going across the Golden Gate Bridge in the fog, and he sees someone about to commit suicide. He says, don't do it, don't do it. The guy says, I'm going to do it, I'm going to take my life, you can't stop me. He said, well, let me tell you about my friend's brother. He tells him that story. And the guy goes, oh, that's horrible. They, wanted, they took out his heart. That's terrible. And then he tells them they were surgeons. And the young guy says, oh. And he says, oh, indeed. And, then, and, the, and the man says to the man who was going to commit suicide, you changed your mind about something being evil to being good in a matter of seconds because of information. I've got information for you that will change your mind about wanting to commit suicide. And then begins a discourse. It's a very short book between the two of them. And it's wonderful because the young guy changes his mind about wanting to commit suicide. And we've produced that book and made it available in bulk so you can give it to people because one, one of the scariest signs of someone committing suicide or wanting to commit suicide is that there are no signs. It comes, you know, up to sho shocks most of us. He committed suicide, I didn't know. No. And so we want to get to people before they take them li their lives. We want to give them the issues and make them think about the issues of life and death. And this book does it and so does the movie. So that's what I was going to ask you our final question. What is your main hope what, is, what do you really want to accomplish through your new movie? Well, the movie contains the gospel. Our YouTube channel has got 46 million views. We have access right into this world, and we want people to share it. It's a free movie, doesn't cost a thing, and it gets the gospel. And it's not like there's some sweaty preacher with a loose tie pointing at you, holding a Bible. You're a fly on the wall, and you hear the gospel presented to other people. So there's not this intimidation. That's, I think, why our movies are so popular. So 46 million views. We want to get this movie out to where people will watch it. So we want Christians to go to that website, theexitmovie.com, and hit the share button and get it all over the internet and prevent people from taking their lives. Yeah, we want to uh, remind people you can watch The Exit Movie for free at theexitmovie.com. Ray Comfort, thank you so much for being with us today.